Hi Truth Seekers, welcome to my channel. Thank you for dropping by. This video is entitled Sex, Gender, Jesus, and the Law. On June 16th, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that the transgendered are protected against employment discrimination. A person's sexual orientation cannot be used against them in the workplace. The ruling is a stunning defeat for Abrahamic religions, but you can rest assured, religion will do everything within its means to prevent the ruling from spreading into society. Western religions draw from the Bible to support a sacrosanct male-female binary. In that ideology, Gender is revealed at birth based on biological sex, sex and affirmed through social conditioning, ignorant of the role that the conditioning plays in solidifying the child's gender orientation. Girls come home dressed in pink, grow with a toy box full of girly stuff, and are conditioned to openly express emotion, avoid tomboy behavior and risk-taking while loading up with fashion and beauty products. Boys come home in blue, are given a manly toy box, and are conditioned to be a sturdy oak, strong and unemotional, a risk-taker in a paradigm where success is highly valued in everything he does. Harsh societal punishment awaits the child and their parents who dare violate the conditioning. The conditioning is classic herd instinct. It advances gender expression on automatic pilot and abuse of the child's human rights under the court ruling and an outright violation of God's will. Per the Bible, we were all created genderless. In Genesis 2.25, we read that Adam and Eve were both naked, yet they felt no shame. In other words, the first couple looked through their different anatomy and found a sense of oneness. Gender entered the world when the couple bit into the forbidden fruit. Per Genesis 3.7, then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked. Perception of physical differences now separated the two. Gender was born, and the one became two. Religion, blind to the Genesis story, outrageously justifies its position as biblical. Deuteronomy 22.5 is a mainstay. A woman shall not wear a man's garment, nor shall a man put on a woman's clothing. For anyone who does such a thing is an abomination to the Lord your God. But at the time it was written, the woman was, was considered to be a second-class citizen, the property of her husband. A woman in male clothing was an attempt to elevate the woman to male status while a man in female garb was effectively downgrading himself to woman status. Those criteria no longer apply. Jesus advocated oneness, the return to the pre-fall state of genderlessness. He told his disciples that in order to get to the kingdom, they must make the male and the female into a single one so that the male shall not be male, nor the female be female. He was also a rule breaker. Just look at his, report, his retort to the rules that prohibited dan dining with sinners and tax collectors or working on the Sabbath. His response was, in your face. Religion's outdated male-female binary reinforces gender twoness and is energized by an unwritten dress, dress code that for sure Jesus would mock. Gender is a spectrum. 
The court ruling makes for a law that finally catches up with Jesus' teachings. The notions of non-binary genderless now need to extend beyond the workplace into society, but a nonsensical dress code stands in the way. That is the subject of my next book. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you later.